Today is Tuesday, May the 25th, 2021, and, and we're continuing our discussion of uh, stewardship, and we're going to be talking about monetary resources today. In Psalm 24, 1, it says, The earth is the Lord's, and all its fullness, the world and those who dwell therein. For in Matthew 6, 21, it says, For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, it says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So we're going to begin discussing today monetary resources. So I want to ask you a question as we start. What is the master plan for the use of your money? What's your master plan for the use of your money? Monetary resource, by the way, includes all of our income and all the funds in our bank accounts, savings accounts, and redeemable investments. How does God expect us to steward our money so that whatever we do, he receives glory and his kingdom is built up? So what's your master plan and what does God expect? Those are two very important questions. And so I, to start with, I, I, I need to make this, this statement so boldly. Practice trust with your monetary resources. Now, how do we do that? How do we practice trust with what God has placed in our hands monetarily? Well, Malachi 3.10 says we are told to prove God by bringing the tithes into the storehouse that there will be provision in my house. So first we need to ask the question, what's the tithe? Well, the Lord decate literally means tenth. Everything one has, whether garden produce, livestock, income, God declares that a tenth is his. God expects that we give into his kingdom a tenth of what we have monetarily and even materially, I think, as we'll talk about that later this week. It's a biblical principle based upon a God who changes not. Jesus confirmed in Matthew 23, 23 that uh, the scribes and Pharisees were right and ought to pay a tithe. But in the New Testament, the teaching adds to the tithe, the level of participation in which one is always given away offerings according to the need around them and the provision of God over their life. Catch those two things. There's the needs that are always around us. They'll always be there. And the Bible even says the poor you'll have with you always. And then there's this other level of God's provision over our life. So the need and the provision that's how we base where we're doing what God has spoken to our heart to do and what he's commanded us to do in his word. Now, God asks us to bring one-tenth, according to 1 Corinthians 16, 2, on the first day of the week and give it to the storehouse. Now, uh, there's there's so much discussion by commentators and, and followers of Jesus Christ about what does it mean to storehouse. And I, I think literally, if you just take the word storehouse, it's it's where you receive ministry and where you are ministering. Uh, some people say, "Well, I can I can give my tithe wherever I want to," but if if you're in a small group and that's the that's your church, then it ought to be going into that small group and what that small group de determines, whether it's a house church or uh, just a small group. But if your small group is attached to a larger entity, then that larger entity is probably the local storehouse. That's the place where you're going to bring your, your tithe. Now, according to God's word, I think that as we look at it, a place of where we're ministering and where we're receiving ministry is probably the, the storehouse. Now, that concerns our tithe. In the New Testament, the participation level explodes. It really does. I, I think one thing we have to be concerned about is that if you designate your tithe to a specific area, you're you're trying to control your tithe and, and, and how it's used. Now, that may be okay with offerings, but probably with tithe, you're just giving it and trusting leadership to expend it according to God's will. Now, I think offerings are quite different than, than tithe. I, I think offerings are uh, directed in our spirit by the Holy Spirit of God. It could even be an offering that God's called you to give to meet the need of a neighbor. You say, well, I don't get a tax credit for that. Then the motive's wrong to begin with, right? 
But that's an offering. If your neighbor has need and 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 you you're giving a tenth of your income to the kingdom of God, then this is also an offering when you give to your neighbor. It it could be uh, that a crisis arises. It could be in in the United States. It could be in your state. It could be in your city. It could be in the world, and and you contribute. That's an offering. That's an offering. You you make a contribution because the Holy Spirit says. He, he pulls at your heart and says, I want you to do this. Um, I would say that offerings many times involve a sacrifice. And that sacrifice never leaves us feeling like, well, we lost something. No, it, it gives us a, a sense of blessing that, that, f- that flows out of a quick and Im- obedient response to the Spirit of God and seeing others blessed by that obedience. You see, to demonstrate our trust, that's what we're talking about. Our trust in the Lord is the sustainer and the provider of all, all we need. We give the tithe to the storehouse, the place of ministry, and, and we give our offerings everywhere God directs us by his spirit to contribute. Now, a change happened in the United States. I don't know how this has affected churches worldwide, but I've had conversation with people in various places in America, and I've observed this firsthand myself with with this pandemic people didn't go to church and and potentially and i read this in some articles that uh the tithes in churches dropped according to the fact that the attendance dropped and people just didn't give maybe they didn't think about it or or maybe they they just uh they they didn't feel good about it anymore and, and they Maybe they didn't have the right motive to start with, but what I think happened was all these Zoom meetings and all this Facebook uh, services and television services, people started shopping around. They stayed home. They didn't go to church. Their church services were shut down, so the, they were broadcasting online, and, and it wasn't the same, and so they just started channel surfing on their computer or on the television, and, and then maybe they felt impressed, wow, I should give my tithe over here. And, and at this point, they weren't going to church and they weren't ministering at church and, and they weren't being ministered to by their church to some degree. And, and so all kinds of complications happen. And I'm not going to make a judgment call on that. That, that, that tithing issue is deeply rooted in our heart and, and how we trust God. This, do we believe God to take care of us. He's the supplier and sustainer of us. And so we take care of those things. Here's what I'd say. Each of us need to be faithful to keep our treasure eternal rather than temporary. And so keep trusting God, keep giving to the efforts of God's kingdom. And then when the Holy Spirit speaks to you about an offering, uh, an extra gift, and it it may not be related to any church, small group or house church or, or even a television ministry, you just obey the Holy Spirit and allow God to take care of you. See, that's called trust. God will be faithful. You can trust God with your finance. And he is your and my provider. Oh, God, thank you. You've never failed us. And I've discovered I, I could never outgive you, Lord. And help my heart, help my heart, God, to always be tender to what the Spirit of God's saying, to be faithful in my trust of you by giving back to your kingdom and then just being an overflow, to be a blessing to everyone that I come in contact with. I praise you for it, Jesus. Help us as followers of you, the one true God, to obey you, to love you, and to serve others in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, grace and peace over you today. Check out what's your master plan for your money and what's God asking you to do so he would receive the glory and this kingdom be built. Have a blessed day.